Hey everyone, <laughs> welcome Hi. to a spot of science. You catch us discussing science. I'm Gus. I'm Chris. And I'm Sally. And this week's episode is brought to you by Blue Apron. Not all ingredients are created equal. Fresh, high quality ingredients make a real difference, so it's important to know where your food comes from. And for less than $10 per person per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. Choose from a variety of new recipes each week or let Blue Apron's culinary team surprise you. Recipes are not repeated within a year, so you'll never get bored. Blue Apron's freshness guarantee promises that every ingredient in your delivery arrives ready to cook or they'll make it right. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash bite size. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash bite size. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Uh, yeah, the, the, the cameras caught us. We were actually talking. We're talking about science. About science yeah. and past questions that we've discussed. Uh, but we've got new questions this week. So I want to get right into it. Uh, question here says, why do you sometimes get a sudden falling sensation when you're about to fall asleep? And that's submitted by Darkhash150. I had a couple theories. Um, one was... Hypotheses. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Not theories. <laughs> Uh, one was like when you're falling asleep, it's a vulnerable state, right? Mm -hmm. And and and, and there, it, it's like predators could come and attack, right? Mm -hmm. So this this sensation of falling asleep is, and then like you jilt up, right? Is your body's double check, saying, "Wait, wait, before Christ, you I've fall got asleep, the oven. make sure there are no. Pre did you? Because so you don't accidentally you switch fall the iron asleep. Off. Yeah. So, so you don't accidentally so fall if, asleep. Say you're, yeah, so you don't accidentally fall asleep. It's your body going, wait, are you sure you want to go to sleep? And then you look around, and then, okay, cool, I'd go back to sleep. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a double check. Yeah. It's your body like saying, don't fall asleep on accident. Is it okay? Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I know we've all have trouble falling asleep on accident. Well, it's happened to all of us. If, if you're attacking, if you're like out in the danger, the jungle. Yeah. You fall asleep by accident. Yeah. Alternatively, it could be your... Well, I don't, this is more, you know, pseudoscience. Um, <laughs> Compared to the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> but like your brain could be like, it could be your brain trying to like fall into another um, consciousness, state of consciousness. It's like Inception where they like. Yeah, yeah. And so, person. and then it's your body, your body wondering where your mind went. And then being like, okay, where, where, wait, what's going on? It's like the pixie song. Where's my mind? Yeah, yeah. And it's like your body so about. being losing its consciousness and then being like what's going on you know like <laughs> trying to figure out what's going on what where where its consciousness just went to okay Wh where where okay uh, those are my two different you know it's what are your one thoughts or the on other that, sally it's neither uh, <laughs> what <laughs> firstly so it, it's it's neither uh, of those ideas neither if you're american um it's uh called hypnic jerk to start off with it's the jerk when you or hypnagogic jerk um, and I, it's, it's really interesting actually, because when you're falling asleep, your muscles are relaxing and everything's really calm. And then if your muscles relax so much, it perfectly matches the feeling of falling through the air because your muscles are all relaxed. And so your body thinks that you're falling. Really? Like actually thinks that you're falling. And so you get a muscle spasm to try and stop yourself from falling. Like So when you feel like you're falling, it's because your brain is literally like, oh my God, all my muscles are so relaxed. There's no pressure pushing up on them or no sense of gravity. It feels like you're floating. So they're like, oh no, I must be floating. The only situation in which I'll be floating is that I'm falling through the sky. Better tense my muscles and wake up. And so yet your your brain is just completely confused by how relaxed your muscles are. It's like I can't be this chilled, <laughs> and uh, and and goes. D I better wake up. Uh, it's it's always so embarrassing to me when that happens. Uh, I, feel, I, I feel like really awkward, especially if you're on like a plane or something, and all yeah. of a sudden you're like, <laughs> <laughs> could, is, you are kind of falling through the air yeah, on a plane, like, which is the, the weird part. Could there be a situation where um, you gave some sort of drug or someone What's it with so, you and drugs? <laughs> you gave someone some sort of drug or alcohol or something where they became so relaxed where their body was again like, ah, oh, it's falling. Like artificially create that. Probably. Um, I'm, I wonder when you say that how it happens to an anesthes 
uh, anesthetists, uh-huh. uh, uh, not anesthetists, other people doing the um, anesthetics. But if you receive an anesthetic, I mean, there are so many examples of where your muscles are paralyzed, but your mind is still conscious. Yeah. And uh, and so you can feel someone operating on you and you're in immense pain, but you can't say anything. Hey, yeah. sleep well That sounds kids. like a nightmare <laughs> come to life. That's something you don't want to wake up from. No, oh, um, absolutely not. And so, yeah, I wonder in that situation if, your muscles are so relaxed and because they've literally been artificially relaxed, whether you get the same thing. I don't yeah. I mean, it's quite possible because it is literally just a, a relaxation state. I imagine it's more likely to happen when you're lying down um, because then you don't have the effect of gravity. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're lying down, then yeah, maybe. Because there could be a really cool some like roller coaster indoors that just makes it seem that you get injected. Cool roller coaster. With, you get this. injected with the stuff and all of a sudden you're like, ah! <laughs> you're like falling. Well, no, so you only had that. <laughs> s- <laughs> you only had that snap falling because that's your muscles oh. tensing up. And once they're tense, you no longer feel like you're falling. You're like, yeah, have you been indoor bungee jumping? It's like you just get a rat. <laughs> but aren't there those like sensory deprivation chambers? Yeah. Where so I, I imagine it might happen in that as well. Hmm. So you're floating, and then it feels like there's nothing around you. Well, I've, I've got a question here that uh, has a pun in it, so I apologize in advance. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm a biology student, and this question has been bugging me for years now. There's this little bug called a bombardier beetle that sprays boiling hot acid on their attackers and prey, 100 degrees Celsius. They eat other insects. So my question is, how come a bombardier beetle doesn't blow its own legs off? Kind regards, Brit. Brent, I frigging love this question. Brent. Okay, Brent. Brit. Brit. Like you. Um... Uh, so Brit, I frigging love this question. So good. What do you have to say about that, Chris? Well, it's, Tell us about the Bombardier It's Beatles. interesting because it's very simple. Have you seen the movie Aliens? Yes. No. No? Okay, well, or Is that Alien. the one where the thing comes out? Yeah. So, so their blood either. is acid, yeah. and it's a self-defense mechanism too, but it's because but because it's their blood, and their bodies are adapted to, be, to, to control acid, that it doesn't it's okay. burn through them, right? So it's just like a body adaptation, right? Mm-hmm. So there, it's well, not this it. isn't just the chemical constituent. This is the temperature. It's a hundred degrees. They're asking Celsius. about. It's literally boiling. Yeah, and they can do, mm, but their body's able to sustain a hundred degrees temperature. That's the question. Yeah, How? and their bodies can. Okay, they just is what can. I'm saying. They can't. They are, they're able to sustain, or they spray in such a way where only their like hot stuff is visible, and, they, and it, maybe if they miss their legs. And they uh, like uh, an accident happened. They could burn off their legs if their legs. I just like the idea of calling a beetle's parts uh, beetle hot stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Hey beetle, Um, show me your hot stuff. (laughs) They're beetle hot stuff. (laughs) Also, in in another situation too, I I am not too super familiar with beetles and what kind of like if they have hives. I don't. I think they're pretty like hang out on their own. Okay. But if there was like a hive of beetles, then they might blow off their legs like bees. Like when the worker, sting. yeah, yeah, as to protect the hive or mm. prote- like protect their young. So it could be a self defense. It's like a kamikaze, like protect at all costs type thing. Okay. It's not a protect at all costs thing. They survive it, and they're abs- they're unscathed. How, That's do, what I how do they how do they so, survive? So the question that? is, how do they survive it yeah. unscathed? Um. So yeah, I I'd just, never heard of this before. I'm terrified that I'm going to run into this beetle. They're now. amazing, and so many videos of slow of high speed cameras looking at them. So if you've got the beetle, it's in the hind legs and they can send out two amazing squirts of, uh, it's I think it's benzoquinone is the chemical. So it's not quite an acid, but it's a very noxious chemical and they can target it as well. So they can spray it in your eyes a bit like skunks. Um, they can make it more of a mist. They can s- control it so well and it is boiling. So I think uh, the control room actually pulled up a video of the uh, bombardier beetle doing That's its it. thing. Okay. So let's uh, let's check this out. Oh, he's a it looks mean. I was just say he's a nasty. Whoa, shooter. whoa! Uh, I, I so they've stuck a pin to its back. Yeah, I thought so that it would shoot it. out the back. I didn't realize it, it would does. Th- oh, it, it you haven't seen it. No, the front there. Is it the what, is it the red stuff? There we go. Oh, so the God. front of the beetle's on the left. Yeah, and it's ejecting it from its back end, but it's sending it. Does it has it ever burned off its own foot though? Is that possible? That'd be embarrassing. Oh. So this is like essentially a... the jet engine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's going to piss off the beetle by pulling its leg. How? 
and he directs so oh, the beetle yeah. directs its um abdomen towards <sighs> the the attacker. Wow. That's that's impressive. Yeah. That's that's scary. Yeah. So it has to have some sort of protection on its legs because that was kind of So on the outside of its legs that's not living material. That's like our fingernails. That's chitin and skeleton. Yeah, so he doesn't feel it. So it's just kind of like Yeah. That's like a suit of armor. Yeah. Kind of like the, uh, an elephant's toes. Yes. <laughs> nails. Toes nails. Toes nails. <laughs> and so what happens is so this benzoquinone that they're squirting out, it needs three different chemicals to produce it. And they keep those three chemicals in three different parts of their body. And it's only when those chemicals come together and they react in a very, very exothermic reaction, that's what generates the heat and brings it up to boiling, that it does get to this boiling temperature. So if they can control how it reacts, they can control the temperature. And then they very recently, as in I think it was either last year or the year before, um, started doing these amazing scans inside a beetle as it is ejecting this hot liquid. And they've seen that it basically has like a kind of pulse engine. The liquids come in, they react and explode out the other end. And that explosion, because that chamber is made of soft material rather than a rigid structure, it deforms the shape of it such that it stops extra fluid from coming in. And so the mixture is always reacting in pulses. And so you've got a hot pulse and then a cold period and then a hot pulse and a cold period. And by timing those hot pulses, they allow their own body to cool down enough that it never reach their own body never reaches a hundred degrees. If wow. so, that that kind of sounds to me like how a car engine works, exactly. like taking in the fuel, yeah. c compressing it, combusting. It's exactly that, but in an organic system that has evolved. That's and the crazy thing is, is that. So it can't just be one big jump. There always has to be an incremental advantage. So it's a simpler version that's a little bit more complicated, that's a little bit more complicated than that. But each version has to be better than the previous one. You can't take a step back and then go forward again. Every iteration has to be better. And this is evolved. It's so cool. That's insane. So if an animal, let's say a predator, ate the bombardier beetle, and then all of those different chemicals combined, would it explode and boil in their mouth? Probably, I mean, the problem then is it would be mixing with other fluids mm. and so it would be more dilute. Um, to, and they're very good at sensing, so they'll do it from a distance. Uh, and so they can squirt quite a long way. Um, that's what she said. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and it's bo ah, my eyes! <laughs> boiling hot. <laughs> boiling hot bands of quinine, as you do. Um, so yeah, it's unlikely that they, they would get, obviously they do get eaten. Um, and if you're a big enough animal, it's gonna burn such a small area of you that it won't be a problem. Um, but yeah, it's still freaking amazing that they can do it. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I hope I never encounter a bombardier beetle. I really want life. to encounter a bombardier beetle. Well, I, I, maybe in a controlled I was gonna say send me one in the post, but that's just not legal. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, all right, well, I think I learned that. I, I hope we do not have these beetles in the US. I hope that. I don't know where they live, actually. I, I, I see that some live in Australia, which makes sense, of course. All uh, the cool stuff lives in Australia. But uh, none, none here in the US. All right. So thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of A Spot of Science. As always, if you have any questions you'd like us to tackle, send us an email to sciencespot at roosterteeth.com.